Hi, in this first video we're going to go over configuring Ravage. Before we can have fun texturing we have to make sure it works how we want it to. The first thing we'll do is go to Blender's preferences, click on install and locate where you saved your zip file. Next thing we'll do is activate Ravage by clicking on this checkbox. There are four different tabs in the preferences. Defaults, Assets, Key Maps, and Release Notes. We'll focus on Defaults and Assets in this section. In the Defaults tab, we have some miscellaneous settings that affect how Ravage behaves. The first one allows you to save images each time the blend file is saved. The second one allows you to rotate the environment in the reverse direction. This will be covered later. The next one allows you to show the node label. This can be helpful but can also make the panel really crowded. The next option allows you to select what you'd like each new layer to have as default coordinates. By default it's set to UV. You can choose where you want to draw the panel that shows your texture libraries. This will be shown later as it's more relevant to texture painting. And you can also choose where you want to show your filter panels, whether in their own separate tab or within the layer tab. The layer tags will show a small color tag next to each layer for identification purposes. This is helpful when working with a huge stack and you want to easily identify your layers. The next option allows you to show material previews or not. This is set on by default as it's more visually pleasing and easier to find materials like this. The next three settings will be covered in the texture painting section as that's where they're relevant. At the bottom we have three grouped sections. Default image settings, default channel settings and channel identifiers. In default image settings, you can set up how you want each new image texture to be created. In the default channel settings group, you can choose what channels you'd like to be created with each new layer. You can also choose to turn this off. You can choose to create an image for each channel on each new layer, but this is set off by default. At the bottom, we have channel identifiers. What this allows you to do is set tags to identify which image should go to which channel when loading in materials. You can click on reset channel identifiers to get the default ones and then edit them how you'd like. What I like to do is change this and copy my displacement settings and add them to the bump. You can choose to make the same configuration setting and you'll see why it's handy in a bit. We'll now look at the Assets tab. The Assets tab has different contexts, Material, Texture, Filter Node Group, Mask Node Group, Texture Node Group, and Vector Node Group. We shall cover the first two in this video and the last four will be covered in a different video. The first thing I'll do is configure my Asset Ninja path. This is already correct, but I'll show you how to get it done. You'll click on this icon and then locate where your Asset Ninja library is. Click Accept. We'll skip setting up Quixel Bridge for this example and we'll go straight to setting up a material library. I'll click on this icon again Locate where my library is saved. Open it. Click accept and click add library. We'll do the same thing for texture libraries, but we'll do something different this time. I'll click on the icon. Go to where my texture library is saved. Open the folder. And you'll notice that I have multiple folders that I want to add. So I'll click accept. And instead of add library, I'll click on add libraries. The next thing we'll do is configure Ravage for texture painting. Still in the Blender preferences, I'll navigate to the interface tab and turn off region overlap. You'll notice that the main Blender viewport becomes a bit smaller. What this does is it draws the panels and actually covers the space instead of drawing transpired space below that. This is helpful when texturing as you can center your object properly. The next thing I'll do is go to the key map settings and search for stencil. I'll go to the image paint section 
and have this first three mirror the three below but with the different mouse buttons. So the first one, I'll select shift right mouse, click on this, select shift alt right mouse, click on this and select alt right mouse. I'll do the same for this three but with the left mouse button. So I'll click on this and select shift left mouse, click on this, shift alt left mouse, click on this and alt left mouse. 